thanks for the the feedback on the market um, at Inspire MD. Obviously, we've placed a very big bet on this market, and we're betting on the momentum that you guys just described. Both from a market point of view, the economics matter in a big way, but it is about having the right technology at the right time. We believe that rising tides benefit the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. But obviously, with SeaGuard, and you all have had a fair amount of experience there. Selfishly, we we see ourselves as optimally positioned here. We're a singularly focused company. Let's talk a little bit about our strategy related to outcomes and data and stent technology as, a, as it relates to patient care, um, as opposed to delivery system narrative that seems to be a part of the theme of the, the discussion in the industry as a whole. Our bet that we're placing is really on the stent on Seaguard on outcomes and on data. The numbers do matter. 1.12% complication rate as compared to either surgery or first generation stents. It's big, as you said in one of your discussions at the podium, which I liked. It may not seem like a big difference between 6% and 1% unless you happen to be in the 5%. <laughs> uh, so, so I think our strategy has been whatever delivery system you prefer, transfemoral, transcarotid, we're invested in both and, and plan to deliver both so that your choice of, of patient care or delivery to the patient and protecting the brain during the procedure is, you, is your choice, but ultimately the stent matters. So just a little bit of um, discussion on how that resonates in the market, your thoughts on it. Is that the, the right way to approach this uh, just in, in general terms? Um, we're well into the, the IDE trial, you know, three quarters of the way done, somewhere in that range. And we can't discuss those results, but I will say they're very good. And when all of us know that carotid stents, whatever you do there, if you do perfect protection, there's still a significant percentage of strokes that occur after the patient is off the table. Okay, whether you use TCAR, whether you use transfemoral, transfemoral, it doesn't matter. And that's from a plaque extrusion through the stents. Now, it's small, relatively small, but it is there. And if 50% of strokes occur in that mechanism, and it's a 3% stroke, it's still a big uh, thing that we want to uh, avoid. This technology, the micro mesh or micro net, uh, it, because it, it combines the best of both worlds, you've got a very flexible stent, okay? But on top of that flexible stent, you have this micro net that has the smallest pore size. You get the advantage of a closed cell stent and an open cell stent. It's flexible, it goes anywhere, and yet it protects against those late strokes. So I think given that you've got a stent, uh, that one delivers very well, two performs very well. And as you said, Marvin, it goes, doesn't matter how you get there. You know, you want to do it from a trans a T car approach, fine. It's the best stand. And even the flow reversal T car doesn't prevent those peri procedural or the after the strokes that occur from plaque getting through the stand within 24 to 48 hours. So now you've got a stent that's performing extremely well in a lot of our hands. Uh, uh, that, that, that's doing well with the low stroke rates that we've all aspired to, uh, as you mentioned earlier, in the 1% or 0.5% or so. We've all inspired to. Inspired to. <laughs> as, aspired I have a note to yeah, say, Tom, Tom, go ahead. Because I'm a fanatic of uh, access routes and um, brain protection. That's my, I found the best stent I can use and I use it. So, how can you get the results better with a better access route? So the T-car experience is very interesting, but I'm afraid that as they're using a first generation open cell stent, Correct. their numbers will ruin the initial findings on the long run. And I'm afraid, or I hope that won't happen, that it will give a negative impression to the stenting uh, world uh, per se. Because if you uh, combine those data, Imagine in a meta-analysis, you put those data in, you have an excess of late strokes, minor strokes certainly, but minor strokes, as they said yesterday, aren't, aren't that minor. They can, they can influence your life negatively. So the important thing is you put the stent with the right protection system, but you put the right stent in. Exactly. I mean, TCAR has shown it scales quickly. It doesn't have a big learning curve. But if you look at one of the Achilles heel of TCAR, 
is someone who's had a non-disabling stroke who gets carotid stent, it seems to have a much higher stroke risk than carotid entropy and transfemoral carotid stent. Probably because you have active plaque that's been breaking off and, you know, they probably continue to extrude through the open cell stent. And so, you know, that's why if you have the best of both worlds where you can deliver it however you want, you know, I think, you know, it bears, you know, witness to sit there and say, hey, if I have a stent that has flexibility, but also has extra scaffolding in that net to help protect against that, it probably would improve the one place where TCAR is shown to have uh, some concern. And as to your point, we're all fanatical about protecting the brain. All right. So if you I use a lot of proximal protection or a combination of proximal and distal, what I tell folks, this is like a triple layer or third layer of protection, because if it's, whether it's TCAR, whether it's transfemoral, whether it's proximal and distal, you're now adding a third layer of protection before, as you stand and as you post dilate, which is the, as we know, the number one time that there's a stroke during the cross stand procedure is the post dilatation. Now you've got this tiny little micro net protecting you when you put your balloon in. So it's an extra layer of protection. It's a great comment. You have proximal, you have distal, and you have intra stent protection. It's a triple. You actually could, could say we, we offer intra stent protection. When, for the first time, we have a therapy that actually attacks when I'm done. So I left the procedure yes. and my patient's fine. You know, till date, we've had nothing that addresses that period after then to the next 30 days. Right.